it was good youtube this is chris hendrix so i sold next day and in this video i'll be explaining how i got the sell so this is the sell that i'm talking about this huge drop right here uh let me just erase everything and start from the top so as you can see this is the 30 minute time frame and i'll be analyzing in this time frame so we'll be looking at this part of the market so the first thing that you need to do is spot your lows and highs right so i'm gonna get the horizontal ray and my first high was right here and my low was this point right there so the market was within this channel before it broke out and sold off because this is the cell that i caught so i'll be explaining how i saw the cell right so we figured out our lows and our highs so you can see that the price really never got to our resistance right so what you need to do is draw another another line and around these areas so you can see the price basically got to this high and it rejected this so we need to get the structure now and let's zoom in and see what we have so the first thing that you need to uh, figure out is whether it's an ascending structure or descending structure and in this case we had the market was ascending right it's an ascending structure so what i'm going to do first is i'm going to actually leave okay let me just explain this one as well so you can see from that point to here the price gave us this structure right here where my support is right here i remember the market moves into phases right it's either moves in an impulse then correction impulse right those are the only two phases so we also have two different corrections we have an impulse and then a continuation correction so what that means it means the price is going to continue going the direction it was coming from so the price was coming from the top giving us this down movement this impulse right here followed by this correction so this correction tells us that the price is going to continue going down so that's the first kind of correction that we have and then the second correction is a reversal correction where the price moves like this right so that means the price is going to reverse and go back where it's coming from so we have this impulse from this point correction and then a reversal that price went back to where it's coming from so those are the two types of corrections that we have and then in terms of structures we have actually three different kinds of structures we have an ascending structure where the price is just going like this correctively going up and you get your trend line support right there i mean resistance and then here we have our support right there so that's the first kind of structure that we have this is an ascending structure hold on i'm sure you guys have said oh this guy can't spell bro there's the spelling so this is the ascending structure the fact structure that we have and then the second kind of structure is when the price is moving more of like a flat uh formation where we call this you can call it a channel or a flat structure right so 
uh, you trade within this uh, you could have sold right here if the price was coming from the top say this is what happened right so you know this is basically just a huge continuation correction right so you trade right there going down so that's the second kind of structure that we have hold on so we're just gonna call this a channel structure right and then the third one is when the price comes from the bottom going up correctively giving us a did i do this first hold on hold on oh yeah, yeah, yeah. i did so let's do the opposite which is a descending structure where the price is coming from the top instead of the bottom so the price will move down in a corrective fashion right so you get your resistance right there get your support right there so you would probably just buy at the third touch of the structure so we call this a descending structure because it's going down into descending right so d descending structure right so those are the three structures that we have descending structure a channel structure or flat structure and an ascending structure right so those are the three types of structures that we have hold on let me just do it the manual way because it's taking time and remember when you draw your structures you need at least two touches and then the third one is where you execute so in this case at a channel structure you would wait for this touch first touch this touch is our second one and the third one is where we focus on and base our trades off so the price on the third touch will give you more structure so basically the price from here will get the correctively showing a reversal correction and then you sell off right or the price could give you a nice impulse and then start correcting right there continuing going up so that's a continuation correction so that's how you apply the two types of uh, corrections within your structures okay let me just raise this And then same applies with the ascending structure. So the the price could get to this third touch. Hold on. We have one, two, three touches, right? And we focus more on the third touch. So the price could get to the third touch in an impulse and then it will start correcting. And then it will give us sorry for the ugly drawing, but that will give us a correct uh, reversal correction to the downside and then from that point the price gave us this huge impulse to the downside and what's going to come next a continuation correction to the downside maybe to the 90 percent rule or 75 it just depends where you want to set just uh, take profits so that is what we use to analyze these charts right so okay let's get into the to the price so you can see the one that i was focusing on 
right here is an ascending structure so we have our support drawn and then we can draw our resistance right there right and you can place this resistance right here because you can see we are respecting this high so if we count the number of touches we have this as our first touch second touch on the trend line and then the third one the third touch always has the highest probability so we focus on the third touch because that's where we want to place our entries so we have there's this thing called confluence so confluence means that the price will give you more than one reason to take whatever decision you have so in this case our decision is a sell so we need confluence what confluence do we have we have this resistance that's being respected as our first uh, confluence we have an ascending structure which is our second confluence and then on the resistance of our um, ascending structure we have the first touch second touch and the third one as our third uh, confluence right okay cool from that point we've we focus on the price within that range right okay fine so let's scale down to the 15 minute time frame to see what we actually have so what you would want to see at your third touch is reversals right price changing momentum so you can see this the last bullish candlestick try to it was a huge candlestick which showed so much momentum to the upside but then the following candlestick gave us the opposite it sold off giving us this huge wick which tells us that okay the price is starting to reverse so what would want to see right after the first selling candlestick is more selling candlesticks right so what did we get the next candlestick was a selling candlestick and the third one was also a selling candlestick so these three candlesticks combined they show us reversal movement so that is the fourth confluence so what you would want to do is place your trade at the opening of the fourth candlestick or the third candlestick it just depends but in a smaller time frame such as 15 minutes i would wait for at least three uh selling candlesticks or bearish candlesticks so i would open on the th fourth opening so i would sell right there to the downside and put my stop loss right above the highest point on the third touch which is here so when we zoom out we can scale down and you can see the price sold off and remember the price might not always reach the 90 percent rule which is this low we could reach at least 75 percent and as you can see it kind of did right here right with this huge wick and then it changed direction so you shouldn't always wait for the price to reach the 90 percent rule because sometimes it doesn't reach the 90 percent rule you are rather safer on the 75 percent right so cool that is how the first trade came about within this channel right okay so let me just remove this so okay cool we moved on and what happens to the price it started giving us another ascending structure right here so what you need to do is grab your trend line get the support of the structure get the resistance of the structure right and then let me just go back to the 30 minute time frame so we can have everything 
within frame so it's basically a repetition of the previous uh setup but then with this one we reached this um we reached this high instead the high that we uh, we wanted to reach at first right so okay cool you can see that the price kind of gives us three touches right the three touches don't really have to touch the trend line if there is a high that we have when the price touches the high instead of the trend line on the third touch we still count that as our third touch so we have this first one right here the second one right here and this one where it touched our resistance or our high previous high we count that as the third touch. So we're gonna focus on this touch cause we trade the third touch. So let's just go back down to the 15 minute time frame. So same concept, you want to see how the price behaved. So this one is much clearer because the last bullish candlestick was way much smaller showing us a decrease in momentum to the upside and the following candlestick is a bearish candlestick a selling candlestick which is known as a reversal right and then the second selling candlestick gave showed us momentum and what do i mean by that it opened and never bought right it just sold off because how do i know that we do not have a wick just like the previous one where we had this huge wick going to the upside it just sold off and gave us a wick at the bottom which shows us momentum to the downside right you'd want to see at least two or three selling candlesticks in terms of a sell you want to, th to see three selling candlesticks uh at your reversal point for you to be confident that okay the price is selling so you would want to open at the opening of the third candlestick in the 50 minute time frame which is this one right here the fourth uh, candlestick actually because you would want to wait for three selling candlesticks so you would sell right there and hold on adjust your stop loss to the highest point on your third touch which is right here this week is the highest point so you put your stop loss right above it and then scale down and just let's look at what the price did so you can see this time it touched the 90% uh, rule right there let me just highlight it so you can see we did reach 90% rule. So it's just basically a repetition of the previous setup. Very simple, nothing complicated, just a repetition of what we saw previously. So that would have given you so much confidence and you have so much confluence in it. Okay, cool. Let's look at the second um, entry. So remember the price moves in two phases right impulse correction impulse correction impulse so what we have here is an impulse to the downside and the price gave us this small correction right there where you could have scaled down to the five minute time frame to have a clear look at what happened right cool that's what we have and luckily for us the resistance of this correction is more flat so you could have done this using the um, uh, rectangle uh, tool to spot out your touches so the price also gave us this 
I don't know what it's called in SMC, probably like an imbalance or something like that. Uh, basically just the price pulling back slightly and then continuing going down, right? So that's what we have right here, which we are going to count as our first touch on our resistance. So this part is the first touch, second touch, and then the third touch, which is the most important one where we execute our trades remember it has the highest probability so just for you to not get confused or what we're looking at you can draw the support to complete the structure or the correction so what kind of correction is this remember we have two types of corrections we have the first one which is a continuation correction of the price where it's coming from and a reversal correction right so this one is actually a continuation so we sell at the third touch you still wait for two selling candlesticks so if we zoom in you can see this was our first selling candlestick which had so much momentum because it sold all the way down here giving us this huge wick and then the second one had no wick on top, which showed you momentum to the downside. So you open at the third opening, which is right there. And then you scale down. Okay, before we scale down, setting your stop loss, you set your stop loss right above this highest wick, right there. zoom out all the way down to your 90 percent rule or 75 it just depends where, with what you're com comfortable with basically right so just for illustration purposes let's just say the price got to the third i mean the 90 percent let me just close the, the sliding door because it's so loud outside Okay, that is so much better now we can focus okay cool so that's basically the second entry this this point right here on the third touch of the main structure was our first entry right and then this was our second one okay cool we go back to the 15 minute time frame now and i'm going to explain the cell that i personally took so remember impulse correction impulse right or impulse reversal correction impulse right it's either the two or it can be no other formation so what we have from this point from this high we have a huge impulse to the downside and the price gave us this nice correction at the lowest low so how do we know that this is not a reversal uh, correction back to the upside is because we broke this level right here and the way we broke it it was so much dramatic it's not just like a small breakout it's a huge price movement to the downside beyond our lowest low right which is very key in terms of knowing like okay this is not a reversal correction back to the upside and it's easy to make that mistake thinking that oh okay the price did break out but then it went back inside this uh level it means now the price is gonna push up it's easy to make that mistake so you really need to um tell the difference between a false breakout and actual breakout right okay cool with that said now we know that we are having a continuation correction to the downside because this huge break was valid uh showing you that now we do not respect this low so what you need to do is figure out 
your resistance train your resistance of your flag or correction and then you can also draw your support right there so now it's where you start counting your touches right you can ignore this uh, small pullback because this is a huge structure for you to factor in this pullback so you do this so where you would factor in this pullback is when the, the correction is way much smaller than this you would factor in in corrections such as this one where it was so small you would have to scale down to the five minute time frame to actually see all the touches but here is the 15 minute time frame and it's a huge price movement so you can also go back up to the 30 minute time frame to see way much clearer so you can see that this is so uh it's not significant in regards to this uh correction because it's so big all the other movements are huge you can see all these legs are so much bigger than what we had right there so we're gonna ignore that and start counting the first touch from this point second touch right there and just guess the third touch this is the third touch okay cool so you know third touch has the highest probability that's where you would want to place your cells in terms of a selling structure right so you also need to see how the price go to the third touch since this structure is so much bigger so you you can see that from the support of a structure the price gave us a huge impulse and then it started correcting right this is a correction this whole part right here the price was correcting what kind of correction that we have right here A reversal correction this means the price is going to reverse go in the opposite direction so we need to draw out this correction starting off with the support and then the resistance right there so you you can also count three touches in this range we have this one this huge wig first touch second touch right after and then the third one is this touch right here so you apply the same methods from the big time uh, uh, big time frame structure to the small time frame um, correction and then within the small time frame correction you have more corrections with within and then you still apply the same principles, right? So quick cool. On the third touch, which is this point right here, you look at how the price is behaving. So you can see the last uh, bullish candlestick was this one right here, which is very small compared to the previous one, which was huge, showed us so much momentum. Okay, fine. So you start to realize, okay, cool, the price might start rejecting since we did reach this uh, third touch on our trend line. And you'd wait for two consecutive selling candlesticks for you to confirm yourself. So fine. You can see this was our first selling candlestick, which sold off dramatically to the downside. This is a huge candlestick movement right but the following candlestick was not in our favor it was green which means it's a bull it's bullish uh, it's a buying candlestick so we wouldn't enter in case of a like in terms of a safe entry we wouldn't enter we would ignore this selling candlestick because the the um, what do you call this the next candlestick is not a selling candlestick, right? So, okay, fine. Right after the close of this candlestick, which was basically, it showed us uh, that it doesn't have momentum to the upside because it closed as a very little 
uh, bullish candlestick, which uh, we consider this as a reversal as well as uh, the last uh, bullish candlestick before this one. They are both reversals. So what do we have after the second reversal? We have a nice selling candlestick to the downside. You can see it had momentum. So okay, cool. This is the first one that we're going to count. So we are waiting for the second selling candlestick, which we did have, which showed us a lot of momentum to the downside. Because you can see this is the biggest selling candlestick from this point right here. And it doesn't have a wig on top. And what does that tell you? It has strong momentum to the downside, which means it just opened and sold off. And I'm using the Heiken Ashi type chart, uh, which is very much easy to spot out where the momentums are in regards to having, uh, what do you call it, pin bars, uh, the wigs. So it, it's easier to tell, okay, this candlestick has more momentum because you can see these bullish candlesticks, they don't have wicks at the bottom, which means they have nice momentum to the upside. So this is quite the opposite. We have nice momentum to the downside. So fine. Now we're satisfied because we have this as our first uh, confirmation candlestick followed by another confirmation candlestick two consecutive uh, selling candlesticks is so much uh, it's, it's enough confluence for us to now execute so we execute at the opening of the third one and we place our stop loss right above the highest point which is this wick right here right below this arrow that's the highest point so we put our stop loss right above it and then we scale down all the way down so you can see it was a huge movement a huge market movement to the downside very huge and in terms of take profits you just consider the past market here we have the historic low where it kind of almost reached it but then the price started um, rejecting up so you would have closed it manually without it reaching your tp or you could have set it at the next low which is this point right here where it hit right take profit so just don't mind all these uh, arrows. Let me just remove them for the price to be much clearer. Okay. Just give me a second to get rid of these. Because when I zoom out, they are so compact together. It looks kind of weird. And I don't want you guys to be confused. Okay, I'll end right there. So you can see, very simple, nothing very complicated, just a repetition of whether it's an ascending structure, a channel structure, or a descending structure. And then when it comes to the market movement, you check whether we you have an impulse followed by a correction what kind of correction continuation correction just like this one or a reversal correction just like this one within the main correction right those are the principles that we follow and your structure your corrections they have to have three touches one two three uh, illustrated by these arrows right here and yeah you should be happy have enough confluence for you to take your trade and then you just sell or you buy whatever the case may be safely right so this is the setup with nasdaq uh thank you guys for watching if you guys reach this point make sure you like subscribe i read all the comments i reply to all the comments and yeah until the next video guys cheers